what's up everyone this is jmdb welcome back to my channel so in this video uh we will be doing a tier list of all the 22 matches that sharapova and serena williams have played before we start off i would like to you know define first the metrics because we need to have some objectivity with you know my personal ranking that's i think the number one um, disclaimer that I am putting out before this video gets any longer is that this is just my personal ranking of of those of these 22 matches that Serena and Maria have played um, in their entire career and so um, you're allowed to have your own opinion I'd love to read your comments down below and back to our metrics uh, first thing would be historical significance so basically like the importance of these matches in terms of shaping the rivalry or the lack thereof between the two as well as how much these matches meant in terms of the statistical um the statistical uh benefit of of their careers and what it meant so off the top of your head so logically like their grand slam matches if they've played the grand slam finals together those will will definitely affect their ranking in this in this video next one would be quality of plays so besides historical significance or the importance of these matches in their careers how well did the, did they play during these matches you know um there could be you know the the how 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 many rallies were there that were exciting how many winners how many unforced errors or like the aces those are you know key indicators of their quality of play with each other um but also we have to consider the mismatch in terms of maybe one of them is severely overplaying the other one so that can also affect the way the crowd engages so that's also another factor which is crowd engagement was the crowd into the match um, because I think that really shows you know how engaging or entertaining these matches are and that will also in my opinion play a part in their the 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 ranking of the matches in this tier list so without further ado let's now go through each of their matches chronologically all right let's start off with miami 2004 so uh this is actually contrary to a lot of people's knowledge um a lot of people think that sharpova and maria's oh sharpova and serena's first match was wimbledon 20 2004 the finals um it's not it's actually miami 2004 which is a masters tournament uh it was a it was a round of 16 uh serena was the heavy favorite obviously um uh, she defeated maria in straight sets um for me honestly it's not memorable i really don't remember this match probably because a i don't i've never seen it i never saw it on tv and you know maria has been under my radar uh not until the finals of wimbledon 2004 yeah. just for me in my opinion um it's not that memorable uh although it's their first ever meeting it wasn't really you know did give that you know um there wasn't much on it it's a fourth round of a masters tournament um and so and you know the quality of play um maria would show flash brilliance in that match but serena just what she was expected to pull through with that with a win so i'm gonna put it to i'm gonna put it and forget it i'm so sorry you guys um no offense please it's just my personal ranking i might get a lot of hate you know so moving on ah wimbledon 2004 i think this is very important a very very important honestly i would put it best um i know serena didn't play much didn't play to her usual level of tennis that we all know from her but just from a historical significance standpoint i think this really is the breakthrough moment in maria's career that really you know shot her to the the superstardom and of tennis she would become a household name and yeah i would definitely put it in best year moving on is the wta finals 2004 so this is actually a match where Seri where maria managed to beat serena for the second and last time <laughs> in their in their 22 match rivalry uh so who would have thought right <laughs> um was this during the bush administration american fans please let, correct me if i'm not mistaken so yeah um but the big caveat here is um 
Serena was injured in this match. Um, that's not to take anything away from Maria. They both played well. Things went to three sets, so that's that shows that it's a great match. Um, but you know, there's always there's that big question mark. Like, what if Serena wasn't injured? You know, what would happen? Kind of like, what if Monica sells? wasn't stabbed <laughs> during that match against Graf. Like, would things have turned out differently? So there's that question mark that's always gonna linger in the history books. Like, you know, tennis critics, tennis fans alike would, you know, wonder, what if Serena wasn't injured in this one? Would Maria not have defeated Serena twice? But who knows? But for me, I think this is a great match. Uh, this was still significant just because this is the second and last time Maria would beat Serena. And even that aside, you know, there was there were a lot of good rallies in, in in this match so you really guys have to check it out um and 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 on youtube there are probably highlights of this match on youtube so just w i'll watch it for yourself so yep i'll put it in great great tier all right okay next one oh my goodness um australian open 2005 just too good too good in my opinion, this is the most pivotal moment in their rivalry. You know, Sharpova and Serena were playing incredibly well in this one. Um, Sharpova actually won first set, if I'm not mistaken, and you know, she honestly could have won. It was that good. Sharpova could have won, but Serena just like hung on, clenched the win eventually. And who this that would actually be the start of her dominance in this rivalry um and for me that's enough for for me to put this in also best tier sharpova never beat serena again after this one ao 2005 serena's incredible comeback victory over maria things went to three sets uh, two six seven five eight six fucking amazing match um so i'm gonna put it in best tier just one of the best matches they've ever played so yeah so surprisingly they would go on and meet two years later again in the same tournament which is the australian open 2007. um so this one uh is also you know serena's serena um Serena's comeback to tennis um, and obviously you know Sharpo was the reigning number one player she was the US Open champion a couple of months ago coming into this tournament and you know people had really high hopes for her like she was playing ridiculous um, a ridiculous level of tennis but you know in true Serena fashion you never underestimate her you never count her out and you know some would even go on and say you know she's when she sees Sir Maria the neck uh, the uh, the other side of the net, she just plays out of out of this world, and so she would go on and dominate Maria, <laughs> the Australian Open 2007, um, six one six two, and there's that you know there's that classic stare down that that um, Serena gave Maria after Maria gave her an overhead overhead shot straight to her body um, Serena didn't like that you know it was shown in the replays was shown in slow motion and you know that really like heated up this match even further um, although it was one-sided I think you know just everything that was on the line I would put it great not best because it's too lopsided um, and you know Maria just felt like deer in headlights to be honest she looked like Serena took the racket out of her hands, and so I would put it in great tier. So yeah, I, I, an incredible comeback story for Serena during the 2007 Australian Open. She proved everybody wrong and wrote to that, and wrote to the final set. You know, never count me out. I could be unseated, and I could still yet I could still win a Grand Slam. So I really, really love this match. Okay, next is Miami 2007. So. This one was played, um, I'm not sure if like a couple of months after Australian Open. Um, it was on hard court as usual. In the fourth round, Serena Williams won 6-1, 6-1. Um, I remember watching the highlights of this match 
few years ago. I, of course, reviewed it for the sake of this video. Um, yeah, honestly, it wasn't memorable to me. Like, it's one of those ghost matches. I don't know if I hope you guys don't get offended if anyone loves this match, but I'm gonna wonder why it's your why it's a good match for you but like for me it was one of those like oh they played during miami in 2007 a few months a few months after the australian open 2007 final so i'm like hmm okay you know okay as usual you know dominant display from from serena but like not dominant in the sense that she played incredible level um she didn't really have to you know both of them were not playing as good as they were during the finals of the Australian Open a few months ago. So it wasn't, you know, I would, if I, for lack of better word, I think it was poor quality of match compared to their other matches. So for me, just forget it. <laughs> not even gonna beat around the bush. Just there wasn't much on the line as well. So there's that. It was the fourth round of a of a of a, of a tournament. So of a non Grand Slam tournament. So for me, just forget it. All right. Next is Charleston 2008. I'm not. This is again one of those like, what's Charleston Open? You know, just do your research. It's a. Uh, it's no longer a tournament in the WTA circuit, but it. Um, so it's actually a clay tournament, uh, a lead a lead up tournament to the French Open. So 2008 actually saw some of the best tennis we've ever seen from Maria. I would argue, like if you guys know Sharapova's 2008 Australian Open run, arguably her most dominant level of tennis that I've ever seen her from her. So you better check it out. Um, but in this video, we're just focusing on their match during the Charleston Open. You know, despite it being Sharapova's, you know, greatest form in her career before her shoulder surgery in 2009, um, Serena still, you know, defeated her. But but it wasn't lopsided by any means. Um, let me pull. Let me pull you guys the score. So it was. It went to three sets. So that means it's a good match. You know. Uh, it wasn't bad by any means. So final the final score was seven five four six six one, and it's amazing. It's an amazing match. I I watched the highlights. You guys should see should watch it, watch it for yourselves. You know, even though Sharapova described herself during this point in her career as like a cow on ice, she played great. She played great. She gave Serena a hard time. Honestly, it could have gone either way. And yeah, for that alone, um, I would put it in great tier just because things went to three sets um, lots of good you know points it wasn't it Maria didn't seem like Serena was whooping her ass the whole time she she pushed back and she you know she really gave Serena a hard time in this one which is one of the rare instances in the rivalry so that alone gives this a great tier verdict anyway so next is Wimbledon 2010 so they would they wouldn't run a, run to each uh, run across each other's paths until two years later at Wimbledon 2010. So, um, by for context, at this point, Sharapova had undergone surgery for her shoulder. Um, she did a, she came back to tennis in 2009, but they never met during that period until 2010. Um, so, yeah, let's see. So this is Sharapova's first match against Serena after the surgery. I remember it's a great. There's a great crowd engagement simply because sh at this point, their Chris Sharpova and Serena are household names, um, and it's a rematch of their Wimbledon 2004 final. So this is a redemption for Serena. But for me, it's a lot of errors, um, a lot of short rallies. Just a lot. It's just you know first strike tennis from both. I don't know if that's enough for me to say it's a great match, but. You know, um, Serena just, you know, shoving down lots of aces um, uh, onto, Seri onto Maria's court. So, um, lots of short rallies, to be honest. But, you know, Sharapova's good, somewhat good. Also, pushing back, you know, Serena, some of Serena's serves. Good, lots of good return winners. You guys have to watch some of the highlights out there no, i'm not gonna endorse that for copyright but please just watch it for yourselves um yeah the final score was seven six that tie break went to eleven to nine 
and then 6-4 in the final set. So somewhat of a good match. Um, but and it was it's a grand sub tournament and it's you know um, it's it's Wimbledon 2010 and uh, I remember watching this live so I, I was I, I, I'm a Maria Sharpova fan but I give credit where credit is due um, you know Serena just played unbelievable and she would go on to win that tournament so um, I'm really torn either great or okay please let me know what you guys think um, it's not as good as the others. Um, is it that iconic? Uh, you know, there wasn't much on the line. Um, so maybe I would put it in okay. Maybe like top okay match. So we'll see about that. Alright, so moving on to their ninth meeting, which was at Stanford 2011. Um, this Serena missed the first half of 2011 season due to pulmonary embolism. So she was on a comeback at this point in their in, in, in their careers when when this match had happened. Um, Serena dominated the second seed Maria Sharpova in straight sets during this one, if I remember correctly. So, you know, for me it's not that memorable just because I don't know. Like Stanford at that time, it wasn't. It's not really a big tournament. That's a number one. Thing. Number two, um, it wasn't the finals even of that tournament or something. It was just the quarterfinals. And the fact that Serena dominated her, I feel like, you know, for me, it wasn't that memorable. In terms of quality of play, though, you know, it was decent. It was okay. Um, but for me, you know, I would say maybe forget it. <laughs> maybe forget it. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> Please, please do be, you know, please cut me some slack. Um, this is just my personal ranking. You know, I, I try to be as objective as possible, but at the same time, it's also my personal ranking that I'm sharing with you for entertainment purposes. And, you know, you're free to also make your own tier list for this one, which I think is the whole point of this series on, on my YouTube channel. So in, speaking of, if you're, you know, interested in that concept, like tennis tier list, um, please don't forget to, you know, like, and subscribe to my channel and also hit that bell notification so you're notified every time a tennis tier list video is uploaded on my channel so anyways so going back is uh madrid 2012. um i remember watching this on tv on tv simply because it's the blue clay this was the infamous blue clay edition of the mutual madrid open um so at this point in their careers you know um it was the uh, the it was one of the most dominant seasons of serena williams's career she was also you know she there was just like something that clicked in her and patrick Muratoglu. i remember correct me if i'm wrong um the comments um and you know she just whooped maria's ass <laughs> in this one as well it was 6163 um i remember what making highlights video of this one more than a decade ago under queen maria sharpova so just check it out um so for that you know um it was an okay match you know lo lots of good you know lots of good winners here and there but you know in terms of rallies i don't remember much it didn't really excite me as much um i just i just kept on praying as a maria fan if like you know i, I wanted maria to stay alive and hang on serena but serena at the end of the day just too good for maria so for me it's just an okay match it's not forget it tier it was an okay match because you know there's still good level of tennis from both women um but it's not as bad as the matches that i've put under forget it so moving on to olympics oh my goodness guys the olympics um for me it's one of the most iconic beatdowns serena gave maria in their rivalry coming off of you know serena williams's incredible wimbledon run wimbledon title run um, the Olympics was also played at Wimbledon that year, so it really, it really, you know, suit, it really was a great timing for Serena. She's in form, um, you know, she's finally won her first Grand Slam of the 2012 season, and she would go on to, you know, continue that dominance for basically the remainder of the year. Um, she won the doubles title, the doubles um, Olympic gold with Venus Williams 
and you know uh, so it was kind of expected you know Serena played some of her best tennis ever during the Olympics 2012 season the London Olympics um, so it was on played on grass it really favored her play style her big serve her her her, her incredibly powerful shots off of both wings she just across the board played so well I, I you know I, 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 I just don't know what Maria was doing at that point you know Serena just whooped her even harder than ever so for that alone yes quality of play there is a big disparity in terms of Serena played just some of her best tennis and Maria just like you know trying her best to secure one or two games I think the final score was yeah 6-0-6-1 six, six, bagel and breadstick Maria so who was you know not a bad player you know she's probably the second best player in the world that time but just the gap of their level of play in this match Whew. for me you know that's the most memorable beatdown one of the most memorable beatdown Serena handed Maria so um I would say it was an okay, it would be an okay match um maybe great let's see we can rearrange these later so yeah I'll, uh, for now I'll put it on great just because it's so iconic Serena Williams won the gold Maria of course with a silver medal so it was at the Olympics not of, not often will you be able to see these it was their only match where they both played for the gold for their countries represent representative countries so I think there was a lot of significance in that aspect so I'm gonna put it under great all right Next is the WTA Finals. So in Istanbul, um, so it was the year-end championships. They were both, you know, they both um, cemented themselves as two of the best tennis players during the 2012 season, in my opinion. Um, I remember watching this on TV. Lots of good rallies, like extended rallies, you know. It's not just like serve ace, Serena would ace, Maria, Maria would somehow ace Serena and vice versa Serena uh, Maria would hit a return winner in Serena there were actually lots of extended rallies from both incredible defense from both players but you know ultimately yes Serena winning in straight sets but the final score I think was 6-4 6-4 if I'm not mistaken, let me check. 6 4 6 3. Okay, but you know, the scoreline doesn't really suggest the quality of play that both of these players, you know, produced. So, yeah, lots of really good rallies from both. So, I would have to say it's a great match. Next is Doha 20. It was during the semifinals, okay? The semifinals of Doha 2013. I believe this is like right after the Australian Open circuit, the Australian Open season. Um,. So, yeah, Serena won 6-3, 6-2 over Maria. Um, as usual, dominant performance by Serena. Maria didn't play bad by any means. She was just really outplayed by Serena during this match. Um, I had to refresh my memory with this one because I really don't remember this as much. It wasn't really bad. It w it's I would I would put it okay because it's not as shitty as their forget it matches but not great enough um yeah just you know there wasn't mu much on the line in terms of the rivalry at this point serena is just racking up on on the win streak that she has over maria in this rivalry so i would put it under okay all right moving on to miami 13. Oh, my heart you guys um i watched this live um as a maria fan it really broke my heart when you know I watched this one but uh, for the sake of this video for this for the sake of this tier list ranking video um, I think this is just I'm gonna put it here my opinion I think this is the best match ever by Serena and Maria um, in the sense that it was the finals it was the finals of Miami Hardcourt um, number two, uh, so many, some of the best rallies, some of the, some of the best rallies I've ever seen from both women, and I've seen in this match, and they both equally looked good. In this one, you know, Maria. Yes, it's a given. Maria would always look like she's deer in headlights. She would always look like she's just, you know, being whooped by Serena left and right in the court. But in this one, Maria looked really good. And actually, 
actually, Maria could have won this match. She was actually, you know, hitting winners and whooping Serena's ass during the first half of this match. Like, for the most part, actually, of the match, you know, um, up until the second set when, you know, Serena, in true Serena fashion, she staged a comeback. She crawled her way back into this match in the second set. And once Serena, like, ran away with the second set, the third set, you know, it was just, you know, just... It was just one-sided for Marie, for, for Serena at this point. She was just polishing it. But for the most part of the match, just amazing. Amazing. Some of the best levels of tennis I've seen Maria play against Serena. And, you know, you could really see that Serena was like... Serena, I think, was frustrated at some at one point because of because Maria was hitting winners incredible winners hit finally she Maria found her angles during this match it's it's crazy the winners she she created in this one just watch it for yourselves guys it's unbelievable I might be go I might be you know blowing this out of proportion I might be too biased but in my opinion I think this is the best match they've played just because they both looked good in this match and it could have gone either way there were Playing for the tight for the Miami title, which is a you know a, a 1,000 Masters tournament. So yeah, just you know all those factors considered, I think it's such a such a such a thriller, such a classic match for me in my books. If you think about Serena versus Maria, I think you really should check out Miami 2013 finals. Moving on to their 15th meeting, it was during Madrid. 2013 it was a final so they're both you know they're both after the title the, this clay title leading up to the french open i think both of them at this point in their careers i feel like this is one of their best like clay seasons it just so happens they both overlapped during the 2013 clay season uh, murray and serena were both playing incredible this is actually you know Sir, the fame the infam the the iconic undefeated clay season by sorry by serena on the other hand maria was the defending champion um coming into the french open so you know it was a there was a lot of you know there was a lot of excitement coming to this one However, you know, Serena won her fourth title of the season at the Madrid Open. She defeated Maria um, in straight sets, 6-1, 6-4. Um, so that alone speaks a lot to like how dominant, how much more dominant Serena was in terms of, you know, just finding that next gear when it comes to Maria Sharapova on the other side of the net. Um, so for me... Um, it wasn't that pivotal in shaping the rivalry either because um, I think you know we'll talk about the French Open later on so for now I would say I, I would put it under okay you know it's not bad but for me it's not that great um, that I would put it above I would put it in a great tier I would say just in great so moving on to their french open 2013 finals matchup uh, it's their 16th meeting in their careers um there's a lot of there was a there was you know a lot of historical significance here because number one sharpova was the defending champion um and so for serena to come into this and you know take that away from Maria um, who by no means is you know they're both playing great you know they're both in the finals of a French Open they're probably two of the best players at this point in, in the WTA you know during the 2013 circuit um, so there was just a great level of tennis from both um, you know lots of good rallies they were both playing well Maria I've some of the best defense and footwork from I've seen from Maria you can really tell she was in it to win it However, you know, Serena just on on a different level. Um, and so, you know, Williams win, win won her second Roland Garros title here. Coming back to going back to that same historical importance of this one. Um, Williams won her second Roland Garros title 11 years after the first one. And so for that, you know, I would place it under great. Moving on to Brisbane 2014. So it was an okay match. 
Um, I don't really rem I rem I watched this on TV. Yes, um, I think I made a highlights video of this one a decade ago. Um, you know, both players starting kickstarting um, their 2014 campaign. Um, Serena won in straight sets, although the la the second set was a lot more entertaining. Uh, things went to a tie break. Um, Serena winning 9-7, so it was an entertaining match. Um, but you know, it wasn't that memorable. Um, it was, I think, the, just the quarterfinals of the Brisbane Open. Um, oh, sorry, the semifinals of the Brisbane Open. Um, you know, Maria. You know, I really liked her form during the 2014 season. Um, I like the way he, she produced her strokes, um, her shot ground strokes, um, her service motion. Also, I kind of liked it. Um, however, you know, for this one, I think, oh gosh, maybe like higher okay match, maybe. Because it was good. It was entertaining. But I wouldn't put it under great just because there wasn't much on the line. And it, it just continued that narrative in the rivalry where, you know, Serena just never allowed Maria to win again. So, maybe like one of the best okay matches. So, I'll put it there. Oh, where is it? There you go. Okay, we can rearrange this later, you guys. I'll try it. Okay, next is Miami 2014. So, it's basically a rematch of their Miami 2013 finals match. Serena won in straight sets. 6 4 6 Three. So, despite you know, it was a more despite the slow start for Serena, she managed to you know regroup and yeah, she managed to go away with a, you know with a win, come out on top. She came out on top for this one. Um, uh, this looked more lopsided in contrast to their Miami 2013 final match in the previous year of this. Tournament. And so it wasn't as great, didn't live to the expectations. Um, and so I would just put it under okay. It was an okay match. It wasn't memorable, it wasn't the finals of the tournament either. Um, you know, when I watch this one, just okay, just classic Serena whooping Maria's ass. It's not as good in terms of all stuff like the the rallies that they produced. I would say it's not as good. But maybe like mid tier okay. Mid okay. All right. <laughs> so moving on to 2015 Australian Open 2015 finals. My goodness, you guys! I remember watching this on TV. Um, so let me just tell you the like the final score. So uh, Serena won in straight sets. Yes, I think Serena wasn't feeling well in this one. I, I think she had the coughs or flu or something. Uh, I think she had like a congested nose. Please correct me, guys. What I remember was she wasn't feeling well, you know, physically, but yet she managed to beat Maria in straight set 6 3 7 6, um, the, the tie break being 7 5. Um, and this, you know, racks up Serena's win to 17 to 2 in their head to head record. Um, yeah, and some also lots of incredible rallies from both. I remember, you know, Maria. Maria just saving two match points, two championship points. Um, so that kept things excited until the end. The crowd engagement, the atmosphere was insane. I remember watching this on TV. It was so entertaining from start to finish. So in my opinion, one of their best matches too. And it's also a Grand Slam final. So even though... You know, it was Serena won in straight sets. You know, if you just watch the highlights, sorry, Maria looked good as well in this one. And so, you know, for that, maybe I'd put it, you know, some of their best matches ever <laughs> in their rivalry. So there you go. Best. We're coming to the end of this tier list video with the Wimbledon 2015 match. So this was the semifinals of Wimbledon during that time. Uh, I remember just their outfits were looked good. They had really amazing outfits. So good job, Nike. Come on, Nike. Like I don't get it. How come Nike these days? I don't get the kids. Like they're not as iconic anymore as during the time when Serena and Maria were active in their careers and they had endorsements with Nike. Just you know, very creative and fashionable. Anyways, 
I'm coming off of a tangent, going back. So this was the semifinals. You know, as usual, even though it's a Grand Slam stage, it was the semifinals. Serena still outplayed Maria in this one. Just too good. It felt like Maria what had her she was on the back foot for the most part of the match. Serena just didn't let Maria an ounce of you know an ounce of, a, of, of of an opportunity to to kind of hurt her so overall quality of the match was okay but it wasn't as exciting as some of their previous meetings so for me just because serena was too dominant just too you know just too good for maria even though it's a grand slam stage i wouldn't i would say it's one of the better okay matches but not as not as entertaining or as pivotal as their great of as the great matches so yeah all right moving on um we're down to our second to the last match um their 21st meeting during the australian open 2016 so this is a rematch of their 2015 australian open finals the previous year um i remember they just had incredible outfits as well great job by nike i liked the dress that they both like the the dress Maria wore in this one, as well as like the two piece dress outfit by Serena, um, looked good on her. They both looked great in this one, in their outfits. Anyway, you going back to this match, um, it was a slow start from Serena, but she regrouped and managed to display her usual dominance over Maria until the match ends. So, the final score for this one was um, six four six one. So yeah, just dog just the classic dominance by Serena over Maria and the rivalry so this is before Serene before Maria went on uh, doping suspension um, for meldonium testing positive for that so uh, we wouldn't see Maria again until the uh, the US Open or the uh, the latter parts of 2017 so anyway just putting it out there like at which uh, the, the like the context the timeline in their careers and so for that i would say it was an okay match we can we can just reorganize this later maybe just like an okay it was an okay match um next final match of their career, final match it was during the u.s open 2019 i think this is the first round i think it was the blockbuster round one match at that time however honestly this is i i was quite disappointed because you know uh, it was one of their worst matches because I don't know like the, the uh, 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 just watch the highlights and um, uh, on the US Open's official YouTube channel it's not that good like even though it's a highlights video it's supposed to show some of their best rallies it's just like I don't know it, man it's, it's bad like just forget it <laughs> the you know, for a US Open night match on Arthur Ashe, the, the crowd engagement was okay, you know, could have been better, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So I think this r sums up the tier. Let me just do a final touch-up of of like the, the, the order from each tier. Of course, I love this tournament, I love this match, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it there. Maybe AO05 comes after maybe from a historical standpoint sure this could be like the best one uh, maybe I'm just being too biased with Miami 2013 but this definitely these two go go ahead and watch those guys um AO15 um, and Wimbledon 04 yeah Maria played out of this world during this final but she lost um, but still, you know, they both played well. They both looked amazing in this one. So maybe here. Wimbledon 04, maybe just because it's, you know, very important in Maria's career, her breakthrough. So maybe. Ah, oh God. They're interchangeable, you guys. Please help me out here. Okay, mm, maybe I'll put it here. <laughs> um, it's This is very important in Maria's career. So I'm going to put it there. Next is Great Tier. You know, I'm gonna try my best to set aside my bias for Maria that, you know, it cannot be the best match for uh, under the great year just because it's the second and last time Maria be defeated Serena. I think that would be a disservice to all the other matches that Serena managed to whoop Maria's ass despite the, the incredible, the great tennis Maria displayed. So maybe... 
This definitely has to be up there. Um. Hmm. Oh my gosh, you guys! I I'm having a hard time without you know. I'm doing my best to be as subjective as possible while also making sure it's something that you guys would agree with or understand why the ranking is the way it is. Um. This one too. This this beat down too iconic. Um. So is this one. Um. Yeah, maybe that one. Maybe that one. Maybe that one. Ah! God! Okay, there you go. I think I'm gonna leave it at that. Okay, this is where the it gets really tricky because there are so many matches under OK tier. Um, but off the top of my head, I think one of the best OK matches that I'm seeing here, just like from like a quick replay in my head of all these matches all uh, all those years ago um i think um, yeah brisbane 2014 maria played well in this one because it's a given serena played too, too she was too good for maria in almost all of these matches so i'm just trying to remember from like how well did maria play you know in terms of like looking good and so um let's see This was a final, so maybe I'll put it up here since just because it was the finals of a tournament. Um, I'm gonna put it up there, and there will always be, you know, of course, imp so historical importance if they played in a, in a Wimbledon tournament. So maybe. Hmm. Okay. Maybe this works. I'm sorry if I'm suddenly also quiet. I'm trying to internalize this ranking. Okay. Does this work? Does this make sense? <laughs> I'm not sure. Does this make sense? But yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Finally, the forget it tier. I think this one's easier for me to rank. Um, just you guys I don't really like this much I think this is the worst match they've played they did, they either both of them didn't look great they didn't look like they were top players during this match from what I remember so I'm just gonna put it there Stanford 2011 one just one of those you know obscure matches in my opinion it wasn't as televised as the others the US Open 2019 just just because it was played in a grand slam stage um, it takes precedence you know it's it's a grand slam stage so i might i would say and also this since this is their last match ever and at this point in their careers they've you know cemented themselves as some of the m best tennis players in the history books so maybe i'll put it as the best forget it match you know so yeah i think this is it i think this is my final list let me know what you guys think about this one do you agree with my tier list of every single match Serena and Maria have played um, or not and feel free to to make your own as well I'll try to share the this tier list template for you guys to play around with if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell no notification so that you're notified and updated every time a new tennis tier list video is uploaded on my channel if you have any recommendations as to what my tennis tier list video should be comment them down below and i'll see you in the next video bye tennis fans